Christians. Uh, we are your hosts. I am Evan Jones. And I'm Paul Hobbs. And welcome to this episode that's going to be a little controversial, but in a good way. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what we like to do. We like to, to mix the pot. Is that a thing? Stir the pot. So, I'm not <laughs> feeling good today. Evan's from Indiana. Forgive him. This is not because I'm from Indiana. It is because I am <laughs> sick. And I've had Dayquil and Claritin and whatever else. Why did you take function. Claritin? Claritin's for allergies. Because it dries up your nose. Because the pharmacist I don't told think, me. I don't think you're supposed to mix. Yes, you can. You can mix. You can. You're allowed to mix. Mm. You can mix um, allergy medicines and Dayquil because they're two di- they treat two different things. Because my nose was a fountain. If I had not taken that Claritin, I would have just have snot running down into my mouth as we speak. I would have, said, home. I would have said no. no you're not. I'm like no. We're gonna get through this. I would have a cup underneath my chin so I could drip <laughs> oh, into dude, it. That's disgusting. How we talk? It's the collection ten. <laughs> the show must go on. <laughs> so, this episode is brought to you by our patrons. If you would like access to our exclusive footage, or if you just want to help keep this podcast going, you can donate on our Patreon at patreon.com slash yourqueerstory. And the videos are up now. I had loaded the videos to our YouTube, but I had not linked them to our Patreon. So if you're a Patreon supporter and you were looking for my new videos, they are there. I just, I had to go now, and Now, because those. Evan does things half ass. So. I didn't do it half ass. I just, I can't, I can't get onto the Patreon from my phone. I can do the videos in YouTube from my phone. But I can't get onto Patreon because I don't have the password. You gave me the password once and I saved it on my computer, but I don't have it saved on my phone. So I can't get in there. This is probably for the best, to be honest. (laughs) Evan would accidentally delete everything. (laughs) That's a good point, yeah. Which, by the way, I'm going to come out with a new series. I can't Mm -hmm. promise that it will be out by the time this podcast goes live. But look for... By the New Year's, I would definitely say. Oh, it's probably going to be earlier, but definitely by the New Year's. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for something a little fun for me, you can look out for Paul Hobbs Wines. I'm going to be drinking some wine, give you a little review, and just talking bullshit about any topic that I feel like talking about after a a bottle of wine. Yeah, there's nothing more fun than watching Paul talk about something after he's thoroughly drunk. So I am looking forward to this series. It's going to be pretty good. It's going to be available on YouTube, but if you want to see all the episodes, you're going to have to look on our Patreon. They'll all be posted there, and there are going to be some Patreon-exclusive videos because it's got to get that money. That's right. We've got to pay for this podcast. Which <laughs> this podcast isn't free. <laughs> exactly. Which we are thankful to our patrons because it looks like we're going to be able to buy a new mixer soon, which I hear is good for sounds. Yeah. I don't know. So right now we're using a $60 <laughs> um, USB microphone from Best Buy. Mm. And uh, we're going to be upgrading to an actual, it's not a mixer, it's a mixer, but it's not. It's a, I forget. I don't know. I asked some people what to buy and this is what they recommended. It's going to allow us to have actual microphones with actual cords and things. They recommended it. (laughs) They said it's great. They said it's going to up our game. So we're looking forward to it. I know you're going to enjoy the improved quality. So thank you, everyone. We really appreciate it. Yeah, that's made possible by you. And make sure that uh, you pick up a copy of The Night's Wishing Well. You only got a couple more weeks till Christmas by Michael Finling. I actually just sent this link to someone yesterday who was asking for it. So this is the perfect gift for a special young person in your life. This fairy tale is a wonderful mixture of classic storytelling and queer characters. Check it out on Amazon. You can purchase the Kindle edition for only $2 if you got a Kindle. Otherwise, you can get the paperback for just $6. And if you have Amazon Prime, it is free shipping. That's the Knights. That's K-N-I-G-H-T-S because people thought that we were saying Knights as in nighttime. Uh. So it's Knights Wishing Well by Michael Finlang. Check that out on Amazon. Support queer art. It's yes. Really, it's really fucking good. Really important. Under, unlike the person we talk, we're talking about today who actually cut funding for queer art. But that's we'll get to him. So, uh, Evan, what'd you do this week? Um, I took my <clears throat> engagement photos because mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm getting married in four months, four and a half Is months. Is that when that's happening? That is when that's happening. I hope you have it marked in your calendar since you're fucking in the wedding. Why would I mark it? I've never marked anything in my calendar. I, well, you better I'll, mark this in your calendar. I won't forget. You're going to forget. <laughs> I know. I sure as hell. I'm going to have to call Paul the day of and be like, uh, where are you at, bitch? And he's going to be like, oh, I don't know. David and I, we're going to do a little shopping. We're going to do this. And I'm like, no. No, you're not. <laughs> you're supposed to be here. <laughs> so. And then I just pull up with my car into the window like... <laughs> <laughs> Smash into the... I'm here, I made it. Everywhere. I'm here, bitches. Fashionably late. Yes. 
So, yeah, so we took, it was freezing cold outside. Um, I'll see if I can I can throw a picture up on, on our social media just so people can get a nice look at me. Um, it looks like it's only 60 degrees, but it was 20 degrees and um, froze my ass off. Sounds horrible. I hate the cold. I hate the cold, too. I, I, I don't know how we did it, but... You know, they're important. You got to have these memories. That's what they say. <laughs> That's what Samantha says anyways. No, I want to have, it's not that I don't remember it. It's just the engagement photos are a whole I was staring stuff. judgmentally for anyone who doesn't know <laughs> I haven't had to explain himself. I just, we we're going we're gonna to have the wedding photos. We have the photos from our actual engagement and we're going to have photos in the wedding, but we've got to have these photos in the middle to be like, oh, remember that time between when we were engaged and we were married? That was also a good time. I whatever. <laughs> well, people usually take the engagement photos a lot sooner. We do. It's like right when you first get engaged. It's That's not true. like, oh, we're about to get married. We better get these motherfuckers done. We got a little busy. And so, yeah, we, we were actually supposed to have our engagement p- photos a couple months back, but then we got busy. We got putting off. And then finally we were like, oh, shit, we really should get that done because <laughs> it's going to be like the month before their wedding. And we're like, here's some engagement photos. And we're like, I got two. So, yeah. Uh, what did I do this week? I came up with the idea for Paul Hobbs Wine because you know how? Yesterday I caught up with my um, good friend from London named Becca. Mm -hmm. And we talked on Discord, which is like a voice chat thing. Um, And I drank a whole bottle of wine Mm because I was like, this sounds like a fun thing to do. So I just bought a bottle of wine and I was drinking it right out of the bottle like I was 21 again. Oh, good. Yep. Um, And we karaoke'd. Well, I karaoke'd and she listened. Um, (laughs) And I was like, this will be a great series. And other than that... I worked a lot this yeah. week. Now, are you going to get a wine to support you? Because you could get a wine to sponsor you. If maybe. somebody wants to fucking sponsor me, I'll take any sponsorship. If you create, a, if you if you make wine and you want Paul to sponsor, you want to sponsor Paul Hobbs Wine, go ahead. What if there's some kind of wine that wants to sponsor me just because we're very similar? Hmm, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> also. Uh, it's going to be sponsored by Barefoot. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> no, what's that? $5 wine. No, what's that? Um, <laughs> what? No, there's an Aussie brand. Yellowtail. Oh, Yellowtail. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be sponsored. Two for eight dollars at your local gas station. No, it's going to be sponsored Buy by fucking up. Franzia. <laughs> oh, Franzia's good. Franzia though. is you good. You just get that box and put your head underneath it. And oh, my time. God. That would be like an epic one. But I couldn't drink the whole thing. But I could just be like, how much can Paul drink? You're a bitch. Until I vomit and throw up and pass out. <laughs> that's just, episode 10 everyone three, three minutes of you talking and then it's like just a shit. seven minutes of like <laughs> and then you puking and like walking around with your pants falling down <laughs> oh this is gonna be an exciting series folks it's gonna be I great i am super excited so anyways <laughs> but yeah so that was what we did this week i also got sick this week and i'm still sick so that's good if I get sick, you'll see a bunch of hate tweets going out. So make sure you follow us on Twitter. <laughs> what are you, Donald Trump? Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna get up at six a.m., sit on the toilet, and just start hate tweeting you. Yeah, good. Okay, good, good, good. This is gonna be great. Good thing I never check my Twitter. Oh, you will. Ah, oh, yeah. That's what you think. <laughs> no one's gotten me to check it yet. I yeah. Because you right have here. six followers. Who's tweeting you? Ugh, I have six followers because I put absolutely no work into my Twitter. I I I like the concept of Twitter. I just. I'm used to my other social media, and I don't want to have to flip over, and I gotta tweet out the same thought on Twitter. No, Twitter's for some, Twitter's for when you want to go on tirades. Oh, I don't want to go on tirades. Then you're not fun. You know how much shit I've gotten off Twitter because uh, I have bad service somewhere. I like mm-hmm. tweet to the company, and then they reimburse me. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Like Southwest was trying to fuck me over, and I tweeted uh-huh. to them, and I was like, "Excuse me, Southwest." Blah 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 blah. And then they're like, here's $200. Sorry about that. Oh, shit. Yeah. Hello. I gotta stop doing Google reviews. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you... What? Google uh, reviews. Yeah. I did a Google review the other day because I was in a coffee shop and their fucking internet wasn't working. And I was mad. I got there early to write this episode and I sat there for an hour and a half, could not get on their goddamn internet. So I got on my phone and I whipped out a little Google review <laughs> like a fucking 40 year old bitch. <laughs> And uh, typed that thing out to them. I felt a little guilty afterwards because I was. I was definitely that, like, like caring. Can I see your manager person? But also, I'm in your coffee shop for an hour and a half and I can't get on your internet. That's why people go to coffee Are shops. Are you sure that you were doing it right? 
I don't know. It might not be on there. You probably weren't even doing it right. Good chance. No, I mean the, even uh, connecting to the internet. Oh no! I tried everything on my phone. Did you ask for on my help? Thing. Yes, I did. Did I asked, they help you? And the girl came over. She's like, um, and she like told me this and that. She's like, well, try turning it off and turning it on. Try doing this. She's like, I don't know, um, if you know, I could reboot the internet, but then that's gonna kick everybody else off, and I'm not gonna be the asshole that kicks everybody off the internet because I want them to reboot it for me. But I, I do that. A lot. I've also written a, um, a, a Google review on the, um, oh, what's that really big bridge? Not the Golden State Bridge. But there's a big bridge going down towards Maryland. You wrote a Chesapeake re- Bay Bridge. You wrote a review on our bridge. I wrote a Google review on the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. Oof, I bet they were. Oh, they got that coming. So, I bet they revamped their whole system to accommodate your, <laughs> your angry Google. I bet they did. They're like, all right, everybody, the whole road structure, we're going to redo it all because we got this one bad Google review. No, Twitter's the way to go because companies don't want bad press. <laughs> but that's why I think I do the Google review because I really don't want to like kick someone in the nuts, but I also want to vent my anger. Because on Twitter, then you really are calling them out in front of everybody. And on Google, that's the nobody's... point. Hello, call a bitch out. Let's go. Oh, because they had a Meet bad day. Meet me in the parking lot. <laughs> Come on, Southwest. Meet me in the parking lot. And do what? What are you gonna do? I'll if run. Someone meets you in the parking lot. You're like standing there. They show up. You take off running. <laughs> I really would. I'd be like, I'm actually. I was just kidding. I was sorry. Wrong person. I think. I, I think. I, I think. I tagged the wrong person. <laughs> Did I say Southwest? I meant Delta. <laughs> good. Good. You're gonna get out of that for sure. Okay. We should talk about this. Oh. Okay. okay we need to sit this down. All right, let me go. All right, I'm gonna read this. Where are it? <clears throat> oh, wait, 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 whoop, whoop. <laughs> He's skipping past the little paragraph. All right. AIDS is one of the few diseases where behavior matters. And I once called on somebody, well, change your behavior. If the behavior you're using is prone to cause AIDS, change the behavior. What Evan just read was a direct quote from President George H.W. Bush, not the monkey-looking one, his father, when he was running for re-election. <laughs> that the one with the big ears you Yeah. Mean? Yeah, okay. He gotcha. looks like a monkey. Yeah, yeah, he does. He does. So. <laughs> Curious George. Yes. Yeah, I get that. Okay, go ahead. That's when uh, George Bush was running for re-election against Bill Clinton. On November 30th of this past year, George Bush Sr. died. The last two weeks have been filled with an outpouring of condolences for the family and public displays of mourning by people all over the country. In addition, the media has filled pages and programming with tributes to the former president. While we're not ones to dance on the grave of the, of the dead, we are committed to covering the parts of history that are often ignored because... What gets ignored more than queer history? Exactly. Well, maybe history of people of color, but they're right there with us. <laughs> I think it's about equal. Honestly. It's about equal, yeah. Our main purpose for starting Your Queer Story was to tell the stories of history that have been lost, forgotten, or deliberately buried. We also retell stories that have been straight washed, whitewashed, and sugar coated, sugar coated, and sugar coated to preserve the reputations of the villains. And this is exactly what has happened to the presidential legacy of George H.W. Bush in recent years, and especially in recent days. The reality is that President Bush lived a very full, very long, and very successful life, surrounded by friends and family and dying, and dying only a few months after his wife of 73 years passed away. There is nothing that we can say that can take away from such a life. However, because of the actions of his life, thousands of queer Americans never had a chance to realize their own dreams. As George Bush lived out a fantasy life, he ignored the dying pleas of young gay men across the country. Because of this, it's imperative to our mission into the accurate preservation of history to tell the true story of George H.W. Bush's legacy. Unlike most of our episodes, we won't waste time on his younger years. Our focus is on his time in public office especially his time as vice president to Ronald Reagan and as 41st president of the United States. And as you're listening, don't get him confused with his son, also George Bush, and also a president. Don't worry, we'll have an episode on him somewhere in the future. But for now, let's talk about the political legacy of George Herbert Walker Bush Sr., the silent accomplice. So George got his start in politics in 1963 when he was 38 years old. I'm just trying to scroll you up can't on do my it. Just touch screen. Stop touching it. I'll take care of it. Fine. I don't know why I try anything. I don't either. So. Usually it doesn't go very well. <laughs> Shut up. 
He became the member of the Texas Republican Party and ran for his first elected seat the next year. From the very beginning, Bush was instrumental in pushing a far-right agenda within the Republican Party. The 1950s and 60s saw a boom of Christian of Christian evangelicals and fundamentalists seeking influence within politics, and one of the main culprits was the John Birch Society. This was an alt-right conservative organization founded in Indianapolis, Indiana. Wow, I would never have guessed. No, I know. It's They're always so liberal surprising. there. There's, <laughs> it's such a progressive state. Right. And it was named after an American missionary. It was actually an American missionary that had been um, killed. He was a martyr. Did he Did he try to go and invade he, a sovereign nation? It wasn't a sovereign nation, but he was definitely in a place that they really didn't care to have him. I mean, you're a missionary. You're going to these places that are like, we're good. We got our own religion. And you're like, no, no, but seriously, I've got a better one Jesus here. Christ is going to save you from exactly. the sins. You guys all thought you were right for thousands of years, but turns out you're wrong. I'm a white guy. I know the truth. So... <laughs> So, yeah, so John Birch was murdered and someone else, a, like, factory owner in Indianapolis, started the John Birch Society. And uh, it was, they were, anyways, like I said, alt-right conservative. George worked with the society, hearing their demands to keep the country segregated and shut down advancing civil rights law. They were such a fun That's, group. Yeah, are you kidding me? Um, which I know about this society. I didn't put much information in there. But if you read One Nation Under God by Kevin M. Cruz, you got to check it out. It talks exactly about this, about how evangelicals rose to power in politics starting in the 1950s and up through, you know, like Reagan and then into today. Um, obviously, we see a very strong presence in our in our um, political office today of evangelicals. <laughs> So nationalist, um, crazy psychopath, like that's yep, it's exactly. A lot. So like this, this religious stronghold that's on our country has not always been there. Like they, they keep demanding and telling us history that we've always been that way, but we really have not. Don't believe those lies. America has not always been a Christian nation. We have not been always been an alt right wing conservative nation. We've been the opposite for most of the time. Until it's now. only it's only in the last fifty years, and it is because of evangelical power, and it is because of men specifically like George Bush who started his career championing these groups you know what's funny about george bush is he actually sucked yeah he oh, like did it no not only as oh. a president before even like an office mm -hmm. he was like trying to get places and reagan was like you should run for this office like oh you, yeah you should really run for this and blah 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 that so was nixon yeah not reagan i thought it was reagan no because he was reagan's vice president mm. maybe it was no reagan t reagan told him to run for something and then he failed, so Reagan was like, come be my vice president. Oh, you're saying, so. okay. Yeah. All right. I don't remember. Well, Nixon also no, told. No, it wasn't for, sorry. It wasn't for his vice president. He gave him some office. Maybe it might have been Nixon. It was then. Nixon. So, yeah. Nixon told him, because it's later in here, Nixon ha tells him to run for an office and he failed. And then Nixon, as a compensation. Appoints him. Appoints him as yeah. a, an ambassador. Okay, yeah. so that's what it was then, yeah. But he yeah. just sucked. Like, he, he wasn't couldn't a win great anything. Politician. <laughs> he really wasn't a great politician. He, I mean, he, he had a mixed rate. Like, he, he won some races, he lost some races. It was pretty mixed. Um, but he was, but from the very beginning, he was championing these alt right um, societies. So he personally, he was personally influential in cultivating a full evangelical takeover, which would seep into the Republican Party over the following decades. Stop. I told you to stop. I don't know why my You're touching over here. Work. You have to touch the white. Oh, okay. Hey, Christians. Do you own a business? Are you an author or an entertainer? And would you like a great way to grow your audience? Well, this commercial slot could be yours. For just $20 a month, we can advertise your show on our podcast. And as a rapidly growing queer content source, we want to help get your name out there. So if you want even more promotion, you can just choose our $30 tier to get ads and links on our website. And for only $40 a month, we'll review your product on our YouTube channel and link it to all of our social media. So go ahead, send an email to your queer story at gmail today or reach out to us on social media via messenger and let us make your business a little more queer bye, bye. so his run for office in 64 failed but two years later won a seat to the house of representatives in 1966 he made a name for himself and we must admit that most of his voting was fair during this time yes he supported the Civil Rights Act of 1968, even though it cost him some party support. He also supported birth control, which was a very unfavorable stance for a representative from Texas. In 1970, George was made a United States ambassador by Richard Nixon. Which is, I did put it in there, but that's why. Because he, Richard Nixon convinced him to run for a, an office that he, and then when he lost, Nixon felt bad for him and made him an ambassador. Mm-hmm. 
So you may remember from previous episodes that 1970 was a crucial year for the gay rights movement. Just a year earlier, the Stonewall riots had sparked a wave had sparked a wave of activism across the nation. By 1970, organizations had sprung up all over the place while parades commemorating the event were being planned in the country's biggest cities. Queer Americans came together like never before and began to demand to be treated as equals. However, Nixon, who had to quit because he was so bad, wouldn't hear anything to do with homosexuals. He wasn't supportive of queer rights. He just wasn't interested. In part of the infamous White House tapes, he said to Secretary of State Henry Kissinger... Kissinger. I, Kissinger. Like you, you huh? can tell me how to pronounce anything. I'm just saying, if I podcast. do know how to say pronounce something, then I'm going to tell you. I'm not saying I'm great at pronunciation. I'm just saying I'm pretty good at the white people's names. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So you got to yell Nixon because Nixon was always yelling. He was like, he was, was he so like much. Brr, brr, brr. He was like Donald Trump. It is Don, Donald Trump is a reincarnate of Richard Nixon. People are like, we've never had a president like this before. Yes, you did. His name was Richard Nixon. Yeah, we same just didn't have social scenario. media. That's the only reason we don't know as much. I'm not going to have a situation where we pass along a law indicating, well, now kids, just go out and be gay. <laughs> I'm not going to have a situation where we pass along a law indicating, well, now kids, just go out and be gay. They can do it. Just leave them alone. That's a lifestyle I don't want to touch. <laughs> this thinking pervaded most of Washington. Few court cases concerning LGBT rights made their way to the Capitol during this time. As activists fought to be seen and heard, George Bush was achieving even greater height in his political career. Um, back to Nixon. I didn't put it in there because this isn't about Nixon. He'll have to have his own episode later on. He That was the most um, tame quote I could find about homosexuals because I didn't feel like throwing in... I didn't feel like triggering people this close to the holidays because he said some things... Like, that was his nice quote about gay people, where he's just like, oh, yeah, just I don't want to touch that lifestyle, do what you want. But he said a lot of things, and he was not kind, and he did not know, use nice words. So. Best to not trigger people before the holidays. But yeah. come back January 1st, you're going to hear all the bad words. <laughs> That's right. And yeah, we're bringing them all. This is no filters. It's not, it's not the bad words. It's not like fuck or something. It's, it's the other F word that I don't like to say. Yeah. All right. So in 1975, George met with newly appointed President Gerald R. Ford, who had been promoted upon Nixon's resignation, because that's now you know he's a good president, Mm -hmm. which Trump probably won't resign, but he's got some shit coming out against him. Oh, yeah. Buckle up, bitch. Ford's... Hmm. Huh? I don't know. Ford spoke to Bush at length about bringing the young politician on as vice president. However, he passed over George for Nelson Rockefeller and instead made Bush the director of the CIA. During his tenure as director, George H.W. Bush oversaw Operation Condor in South America. You need to research it. We're going to talk very briefly about it, but you need to look it up. Operation Condor, C-O-N-D-O-R, as in the bird. The covert operation was a U.S.-backed campaign to rid the southern continent of Marxist subversion, a.k.a. communism. Based on the influx of imp- based on the influx of political exiles fleeing to Argentina, the CIA funded a right wing military state in many of South America's biggest and most prominent countries. This resulted in a reign of terror, which ended in conservative estimates of thirty thousand people killed for no reason. For no reason, it was just a pure chaos as they're trying to save the country from from communism. Some have estimated upwards of 60,000 victims of Operation Condor. While it is atrocious to think of our country backing such a bloody regime, the consequences were far more than just political. Because of Operation Condor, South America would be set back decades in social, medical, and economical reform. These factors all played a large factor in treating the AIDS epidemic that broke out in the 80s and continued to ravage the continent for the next three decades. Even today, there are at least 2 million people in Latin America living with HIV, and that is with almost 10 years of the infection being stabilized. Of course, George H.W. Bush cannot be held directly responsible for every outbreak and death of the virus, but he does play a large role, and his responsibility in South America's epidemic was summed up eloquently by an article in The Nation written by Stephen Thrasher. Bush exasperated the material conditions that allow AIDS to flourish in the first place. For what causes AIDS, and why has it always so disparately affected black people? Medical research and pharmaceutical interventions are important in dealing with the consequences of serial conversions and limiting onward transmission of HIV. 
but AIDS is caused by broader social problems. Homelessness, inadequate access to health care, political instability, racism, homophobia, and the violence of capitalism. And on these fronts, Bush is guilty. His behavior matters. As a former head of the CIA, Bush created political instability in nations around the globe where AIDS would thrive. But even if you're not convinced George is responsible for the crisis in our sibling southern continent, then we can at least talk about what he did for AIDS in America. Or better yet, what he did not do. In 1980, George decided to run for president, but after a few months of campaigning, he realized he was no match for the handsome former movie star and California governor, Ronald Reagan. Not only did Reagan have his looks and his fame going for him, but he was also a darling of the conservative right. While Bush represented more moderate politics, Reagan represented straight, white, evangelical Christians who were becoming concerned that they were losing their country because... <laughs> That's yeah. the most triggering thing ever. We're losing our country. Oh. First of all, it was never your country. To yeah, begin exactly. With. Yeah. Like, you're it was in a... fucking America, first no, of no, all. No, no, but yeah. Like, you came and slaughtered an entire group of people. Yeah, you to had take you, over. a genocide. You, you caused a genocide on an entire group of people that lived here. So mm-hmm. you never lost your country. Yeah, it wasn't your country. And you're not losing your country because it's never been your country to lose. Exactly. And then you enslaved everyone that didn't look like you so you could make sure that you could have control over this country that wasn't yours. Mm-hmm. And then you set up all these ridiculous laws so that only a small group of people could have any power in this country so that no women, no queer people, no people of color could have any power, any say. And then you slowly had your fingers pried from those laws and you're like, oh my God, we're losing our country. It's triggering. (laughs) (laughs) It's just just the same, but it's just incredible that how it's been the same lie projected over the Mm -hmm. last 50 years. This, it's worked. It's, it keeps working. Worked. If you just keep getting up as a Republican and creating your fear mongering of we're losing our country, we got to turn our country back to God, blah, 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 you're going to keep igniting the far right because they're still convinced. They're like, they're I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna have to let somebody else do everything I can do. Exactly. That's terrifying. I can't live yeah, with that. How, how can anybody can live with that? How do people live that way? How do people live that way in a, in a, a, a society that's completely equal? It must be just terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. So, so con- content to settle down on his grandfather's estate, George withdrew from the race and he retired to Maine. But he didn't have much time to get comfortable. After winning the primary, Reagan selected Bush to run as his vice president. They won the 1980 election by a landslide and marked the beginning of the conservative era. Some people call it the Reagan era, but it's the conservative era. And it was a really big margin, especially because uh, Reagan was running an incumbent, uh, running against an incumbent president. Mm. Um, many, believe, ugh, many people believe this is when Bush began to compromise on his values, at least from a public political standpoint. Some have argued that he never had any values before, and others maintain that he lost his moral compass due to power only to regain it later in years. We leave that up to the listener to decide. What we do know is that over the next 12 years, George would watch thousands of Americans die of AIDS and hardly utter a word to help. And we, Paul and I were talking about this before the show. It's He's very odd. I, I don't know. When I started researching, I was, you know, I was kind of, I didn't know much about George H.W. Bush, as I told Paul. And I didn't really know what to think. And people, some people were really vilifying him. Others were praising him. And it was just mixed reviews. And what I can tell you is I have mixed feelings on the man. He's not a hero. He's not a friend. I don't know if he was the villain. He seems to me from this like a coward. Yeah. He's willing to forego and give up everything so that he can get power. Mm. He's willing to mm. say what he has to say. Yeah. He's not willing to stand by anything. He'll do what he needs to do to get to power and he'll let anybody die yeah. that he has to, to so that he yeah. can be in power. He was, I would say he was definitely loyal to a fault and to the fault meaning he was very loyal to men who you know allowed atrocious things to happen i mean again he's the director of the cia he oversees operation condor now that uh, technically you can attribute to nixon Mm -hmm. um and then to ford to gerald r ford but um but still he's the director you know and then he stands by probably never batted an eye he never tried to say hey maybe let's do it maybe don't yeah maybe don't fund you know you know don't fund these terrorist attacks you know and this this uh this takeover 
I don't know, but you know, like you go back to his younger years, he's supporting the Civil Rights Act. He's supporting a f- um, birth control, even though that's not popular in his party. Not really popular in general, but especially in his party as a Texas representative. He's just a coward. Yeah, he's. That's how yeah, I sum it up. I would say that. Yeah, he's a coward, and and it, yeah, he he definitely put his his poli- his politics before pe- the people. Mm-hmm. I would say that for sure. In 1981, the Center for Disease Control announced five cases of a new kind of pneumonia. Um, announced in 1981, the Center for Disease Control announced that five cases of a new kind of pneumonia had been detected in a group of young men, all active homosexuals. Over the next year, as most cases came, as more cases came forward, this would be blown into a media hysteria of a new gay cancer. Truthfully, there was evidence of the virus forming over the previous two decades, making its way around the world. However, the cases were so spread out that researchers had not yet been able to connect the findings. As more patients came forward, the epidemic erupted on the national scene. By the following year, there were 853 deaths, yet President Reagan and Vice President Bush didn't mention the disease at all. In 1983, there were 2,304 deaths reported in the U.S., and still the presidency did and said nothing. The numbers continued to climb with 4,251 in 1984 and 5,636 in 1985. Entire communities were being wiped out, healthcare was inaccessible, and while groups were pleading to Reagan and Bush for recognition and federal aid, the presidency ignored the issue until 1985, finally, in September of that year, Reagan came out to defend his administration's lack of action on the epidemic. He snapped back at criticism around the lack of funding for AIDS research. It would still be another two years before Reagan would establish a commission to investigate and provide research to combat the spreading virus. We will obviously um, have pro- uh, at least a three-part episode on the AIDS epidemic mm-hmm. sometime in the beginning of the year. I don't know if it'll be January, but probably February. Um, I've got the very infamous book and the band played on, as well as a few other good resources that I'm going through now. I just want to give it proper It needs an research. extensive yeah. coverage. It does. So, so during all of his, during all of this, the vice president remained as silent on the issue as his boss. In 1988, Bush was selected by the Republican Party to run for president, and he won. In his first year as president, the death toll rose to 100,000 known AIDS-related deaths. The formidable, the formidable group, ACT UP, was ramping up their protests against an apathetic government. Their constant harassment of Bush and Washington officials led to the American with Disabilities Act of 1990, which protected people with AIDS and HIV from discrimination, as well as the Ryan White Care Act, which provided funding for AIDS and HIV patients. Um, And there's also, I didn't put it in here, but there's a very famous scene of the ACT UP protesters would go into, they also deserve their own episode and then later on, maybe maybe next year we'll have an edition of Heroes of the LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. Um, and but they would they in 1992 they walked on the lawns and they took the ashes of people who have died of AIDS and threw it on the White House front lawn. Wow. Also in the 1992 election they marched the dead uh, the dead body of a man um, to like the the steps of George Bush's house in I think Maine like marched it there. Um, so like people are dying left and right and they're just not saying anything. You know, a hundred thousand people in your country are dying of a virus and you're not even. That's talking insane. about it. You're not even talking about mm-hmm. it. They're pretending like nothing's happening <clears throat> while people are dying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and it and it further pushed this stigma, which when we do cover the AIDS epidemic, we'll talk about it because so the thing that people of all lifestyles were dying of AIDS, but because it had first been classified in America, we have five active homosexuals. It's a gay, and they're dr- dead. A gay disease. It's a gay disease, and as it's branded that way, is now everyone who's gay, it's it, it's it's become it's a gay disease. You can get you can get um, age just from being around a homosexual, even yeah. though it has nothing to do with that, and they're not talking about people are refusing sex. to treat people, gay exactly. people, because right. I don't want to get it. I, I exactly. don't want to help them. If I touch you, I could get AIDS. You know, and part of it's a lack of knowledge, but you have a lack of knowledge because the government won't give you funding so that you can research, mm-hmm. do the research necessary to right. understand this exactly. disease. It's not like they had every fucking resource and they could have figured this out. They were right. like, it just didn't exist. Exactly. And meanwhile, because you're not protecting. Um, Meanwhile, because you're not um, tr- treating it as anything other than a gay disease, you're not um, telling 
straight young couples to have safe sex. Right. In fact, in I think it's 1990, Cosmopolitan pr- produ- um, sent out a um, Cosmopolitan magazine published an uh, article that told women that they could have unprotected sex with men without having to worry about cont- contracting an STD. Oh, my God. And that's how much the lack... But that's how... That's how ignorant our society was, and that's how much they were putting on, oh, you're getting AIDS because you're gay. You're yep. homosexual. Homosexuals are being punished by God with this disease, and that's what it is. Mm-hmm. So we can have all the unprotected sex we want because we're straight. Absolutely. Exactly. And then you have the churches pushing, mm-hmm. like, look at these homosexuals. They started mm-hmm. re- protesting and demanding rights, and God striking them down, mm-hmm. and... So you not only have it coming from the government, you have it coming from these religious institutes as well. Exactly. You're getting, like, it's just, there's no help. Exactly. And who's championing these religious institutes and their voice in Congress? George H.W. Bush. Oh, absolutely. He's the man making, the, you know, even if you say he didn't do as much as, as a Reagan or his son, he made, he opened the door for them to come in. He oh, yeah. opened the door for us to be set up for the position that we are in now. Mm-hmm. He had the opportunity to close that door. He had the opportunity to bring us back to more moderate stance. And it said he opened it, he made, he paved a way oh, for these evangelical voices and therefore this ignorance and the stigma to continue to rise. Kind of said it better. <laughs> Thanks. So, however, though President. However, though Bush was the president who signed these bills into law, the American Disabilities Act and the Ryan White Act, that does not make him the hero. uh, Irvashi. Irvashi Vaid, uh, V-A-I-D, who was the the leader of the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force during this time, said of Bush signing the bills, he absolutely deserves credit for signing those bills, but he does not deserve credit for the existence of those bills. Let's be clear. Each of those bills came about because of AIDS activists' pressure, because of congressional leadership, and not because of White House leadership. He submitted approbations. Appropriation. Oh, look at you now. He I submitted. <laughs> he submitted appropriations bills each year on HIV that were in, that were inadequate and had to be increased by pressure brought on by Congress. He opposed needle exchange programs that could have saved thousands of lives. So there are many instances in which President Bush did break from Reagan years, did break from the Reagan years, and could have signaled and acted upon the kinder and gentler conservatism that he promised at his inauguration. But you know, there were many other instances in which he did not do enough. And that's basically his thing where like, you know, you know, he's not a hero for signing. People are like, well, yeah, but look at the things that he signed. He just happened to be the president. These bills were already being pushed by members of Congress. He just happened to be the guy at the desk when it came to him. He didn't exactly. do anything he to get there. He did nothing. He did nothing to aid the fight on AIDS. He did nothing to help um, queer Americans. He just happened to be in the office, and so he was the guy who got to sign yep. the bills. So he didn't create, he didn't, like they said, he signed them, but he was not, you know, if he hadn't signed them, it would have been even harder for him because it was such a push at that point. By oh, now, yeah, the country is in such an uproar. He could not, it's not that he could have backed out of signing them. Right. So while Americans began to shift from the hardened stigma surrounding the gay community and the AIDS virus, other issues were coming into play. In the 1992 presidential election, gay rights were finally a topic of conversation. From the proposal, of, from the po- hmm. From the proposal to allow open homosexuals to enlist in the military to the possibility of federal to the possibility of federal rights for same-sex couples holy shit i can't speak bush joined right-wing advocates opposing funding for queer artists he also signed a bill that would stop benefits for domestic partners of same-sex couples and at the republican national convention he declared there was a religious war in this country and conservatives must stop the militant homosexual rights movement because if somebody's as equal as you are, they're militant. Absolutely. He became he came out against queer Americans so ferociously that the log cabin Republicans refused to endorse a Republican candidate that year. And the log cabin Republicans are the gay Republicans. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, they had formed a few years earlier, actually, but they couldn't support him. He also had said in an interview, someone's like, well, what if your grandchild was gay? And he said... I would love them, but I would have to tell them that they were wrong. That there was, some, I would have to tell them that there was something wrong with them. 
As Bush's opponent Bill Clinton ran on the promise to end discrimination against queer military members, Bush ran on the opposite promise. And when he was interviewed about homosexual parents, he told the New York Times, I can't accept as normal lifestyle people of same sex being parents. I'm very sorry, I don't accept that as normal. Whereas before he had been silent, now the president was making his views on queer citizens known. It did him no favors. In 1992, he lost the election to Bill Clinton. Over the next 20 years, George H.W. Bush faded from the spotlight. From time to time, his name and legacy would rise again, especially when his son ran and won the presidency in 2000. He still seemed to hold on to his same ideas. Then, in 2013, he and his wife attended the same-sex marriage of two of their friends. After a lifetime of silence and then open attacks, perhaps the man had evolved. Again, that is for the listener to decide. What we do know is George Herbert Walker Bush was certainly no friend of the queer community. At best, he was a silent accomplice of our most vicious attackers. And that is why he, too, is listed with the villains. So, this is kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure was he a villain or was he not? You can decide for yourself. He was very mixed. I think Paul said it best. At best, he was a coward. Um, and he was he was an accomplice because silence is complicity. And he and I do find it odd. He mean, I, And this was 20 years later. This is, you know, he gets ousted in 1992 or mm-hmm. 1993, Bill steps into yep. office. And in 2013, 20 years later, he goes to a marriage for two of his friends, that are gay. But do you think it's a, oh, we're going to go to one of those gay marriages. It's going to be a spectacle. I don't think it was that. I don't think by then. I mean, no. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say. But, I, you know. He never came out in support of it publicly. So that's the only way I can he came think out, of it. He came out a, against it several times. Right. Even after. So he never came out in support of it. So I can't say mm-hmm. or even think that maybe he was like, I mean, maybe this, I, I don't know. I can't, I can't say. I can't say. I don't get it. And then I did read, and I don't, but I couldn't find um, verification that in 2015, so two years after the wedding, someone asked him, so are you, do you support gay rights now? And he said, well, no, I still don't support same-sex marriage, but I, you know, I think people should be able to do what they want to do. So, again, ugh, fuck if I know, George. <laughs> but... So if you're wondering about George H.W. Bush and your feelings, I mean, that's the information that we have. We can't tell you what to think either way, but we put him on our list of villains because um, his silence hurt a lot. I mean, like, again, over 100,000 Americans died of the AIDS virus. For no reason. And millions around the world have died. And it was because of inaction and, and because of the stigma against the queer community. So and and that and then of course the open attacks that he did against queer Americans in the early 1990s. I mean, he directly attacked us. Attack, attacked us. He directly <laughs> attacked our community community on numerous occasions, not just in the 1992 election, but even after speaking out against same sex marriage, supporting his son's um, open bigotry against our community, mm-hmm. and so. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, while this was a very informative episode, we do want to say our condolences with his family. Yes. Um, losing a loved one, no matter who that person is, always sucks. So yeah, yeah, and that's another thing. Yeah, it's about the family grieving because regardless of what you think about George H. W. Bush, he's still so he's still a father. He's a grandfather. He's a friend. He's a brother. Um, you know and. You don't dance on the grave of the dead for those people. You right. know, I've lost grandparents. I've lost a father. And regardless of what people may think of those individuals, I, I still don't want someone, you know, saying awful things about them. I mean, they're dead now. It doesn't matter. And again, you can't, like we said at the beginning of the episode, you can't hurt him. The man lived an amazing life. Yeah. I mean, whether he deserved it or not, he lived it. Mm-hmm. So, like, I mean, he won. <laughs> In the end, regardless <laughs> of what we think, he whether he was right or wrong, he won. So, yeah. so uh, stay queer. Yeah, don't get a lobotomy. And, you succulent sapphists. And we love you, our little allied hookers. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>